morning but the word that we read this morning starts started off with a prophecy Elijah said hear ye the word of the Lord in other words listen up because there's a word coming from the Lord that the people need to hear he said thus said the Lord in other words not my words not the words of some man but the Lord God Almighty hear what he has to say he said tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Now what you have to understand is that this prophecy seems so out of place for the time in which it was spoken. Because you have to understand that it's this time there was great famine in the land of Israel. The people were distraught. They were in a time of desperation. It was such famine that we in North America can't even imagine, but famine that would drive uh, them to eat their cattle and more so even eat their children because they were so desperate for food. The land was bare and the land was desolate and the people were desperate. It was a famine so great that would drive people to do things that they never imagined that they could even possibly think of because there was such a state of desperation and a time uh, of desolation and the people were desperate. If you read the story before, you'll hear a story of war and of severe famine. And it was a dark time that it just seemed like one of the darkest times of Israel that people could look back and remember. Sometimes we can sympathize for in our own lives. We seem to have some dark times where we feel that we're in a situation where things just can't get any worse. Sometimes we feel like we're in a situation in our own lives where we've reached rock bottom and, and there's no other place to go. We've reached the absolute worst place that we can possibly imagine. Our worst uh, fears have come to pass and we're living in a nightmare, so it speaks. Right. That's the experience that Israel was living at this time. That's what they were going through at this time. And in this place, we see this Lord who leaned on the king's staff, the Bible said. And it was a Lord who, who was close to the king. And he heard this prophecy and he doubted the prophecy that came forth. Because you see, this Lord was looking at things through the natural. He was looking right. with his natural eyes and seeing the situation. There was... To him, there was no correlation between what he had heard and the prophecy and what he could see in his natural eyes. Where from where he was coming from, there was, there was no possible way that tomorrow what the prophet said could come to pass. Maybe a couple years down the road, maybe in a little while, maybe with you know some help from other people, but the prophet had said tomorrow. Tomorrow, as in 24 hours from now, and just a little while from now, there would be great rejoicing in the land and sometimes you know we we criticize the the lord and say how come he couldn't understand but sometimes we're like that because sometimes the lord gives us a promise and maybe he doesn't put a time limit on it but we are so stuck in our position where we are that we can't seem to understand the prophecy that has come forth we can't seem to understand how the word that's been given can apply to our lives. Right. We can't seem to correlate how this word that we've heard from the Lord can really be for us. And sometimes we question that maybe, you know, it's for a time down the road. Maybe it's for even somebody else. Right. But the Lord has given us a word. The Lord has given us a prophecy. He's given us a word and a command. And this morning he told us to sail on. Yes, right. And sometimes yeah. it's so difficult to get out of a situation where you are. You see, how can I possibly sail on? How can I move? Because there's a barrier in front of me. There's something that's impeding my progress. There's something in front of me that's stopping me from getting past this place. And I, I feel like I'm stuck. I feel like I can't move. I feel like I can't go anywhere. But the Lord is telling us this morning to sail on. The Lord was telling us 
Israel at this time, that they needed to look up, that they needed to be encouraged because the desolation, their desolation was coming to an end. That's right. But you see, there was a problem because the Lord can speak, but if we don't receive, yes. that's it. if we don't receive the words of the Lord, then they won't apply to our lives. Right. Not because the Lord didn't attend the word for us, but because we don't allow it to apply to our lives. That's right. You see, the Lord is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ever ask or think. And I don't know about you, but I, I think I have a pretty vivid imagination. I think my imagination runs wild a lot of times, but to think that the Lord is able to do much more beyond what I can even think. My God. That's but right. we limit the Lord in our lives. The only thing that is stopping us from drawing close to the Lord, from getting out of this place where we are, a place of stagnancy, a place of desolation, a place of desperation, is us. For the Lord has already declared that our, our desolation is coming to an end. He's already declared that all we need to do is praise Him for the victory. And as we praise that He will send our deliverance. Yes. But until we receive the word, until we put our faith into action, then that word is null and void in our lives. Right. And this is a sad place to be in because so many times we get frustrated and we, we feel like we're going around in circles, but just on the other side, just in tomorrow, in our tomorrow, it's just right around the corner, but we're so stuck in the problems of today that we can't reach the promises that the Lord has already established for us. Amen. But at this time, there were four lepers. Now, what you have to understand about leprosy is that it was uh, a disease that, that ravaged the body, that is a flesh-eating disease, if you will, and so much so that anyone who even had a spot of leprosy, even the tiniest uh, spot of leprosy, was cast out into the camp because they were considered unclean. Because everyone was afraid of them. They were afraid of catching what it was that the, the person had. They were uh, afraid of, uh, of this skin-eating disease to, to kind of come and captivate them. And so they pushed the lepers outside the camp and they lived in colonies. And even if you go into some uh, certain countries, even today, uh, in Central America and South America, they still have leprous colonies because they're still so afraid of this disease because it just kind of eats away and eats away at you until there's nothing left. And there were these leprous men at this time who were ostracized from their community. They were ostracized from the people that they knew, or family or friends, it didn't matter. They were uh, doomed to live on the outskirts of society because they were considered unclean. So not only did they have to endure the famine, Excuse me. Not only did they have to endure the, the sadness of the famine and the desperation that was going on in the midst of the city, but they had to do so alone because they didn't have the same support system as everybody else. They didn't have the benefit of the city or the people to be around them. But all they had was each other. All they had was each other. And as they were sitting around this day, they looked at each other and they looked at their despicable state and they started to, to talk a little bit and to reason amongst themselves. They started to look at their state and look at their situation and realize that, you know, they were, they were deep and clean and to them, or according to society, they had nothing good to offer. Right. They started to look at the fact that they were ostracized and, and cast aside and not cared about. No one was coming to check in on them or see how they were doing, see if they were okay, see if they needed anything. They started to look at their situation and the desperation of their situation. That's right. But instead of lamenting their situation, they started to look at the bigger picture. Right. They started to look just beyond themselves and they started to take heed as to what was going on around them. For it wasn't just them that were in a desperate situation, but everyone was struggling. Right. Everyone was trying to fend for themselves. Everyone was trying to find nourishment just to, to keep themselves alive from day to day. Right. They started to look at the bigger picture. They started to examine the situation for what it was and realize that there wasn't much that they can do. 